What are the things that suck about driving for Uber? Well, we had somebody make a list of 17 different things that we're gonna go over, and we posted it on our socials and wanna see what other things you had to say. So let's get into it. Hey everyone, my name is Chris and welcome to the Rideshare Guy. So we had somebody who is part of a Facebook group and came across a post that said things about Uber that suck. So it's 17 things, you can see it on the screen right now. We're gonna go over it real quick and then we're gonna go over some of your comments because we posted it on, on different socials like the YouTube community tab and our Facebook page. All right, before we even get into the list, if you have some gripes with driving Uber or Lyft, what are they? What are your complaints about it? Put it in the comments below and then compare it to the list. See what you think. So let us know in the comments. All right, so what Levi had to say and what you see on the screen right now is things that suck about Uber. One, passengers with body odor, especially the pot smokers. Number two, Uber repeatedly giving you trips that you declined. Number three, low vomit fees. Number four, making me select a ride in seconds while I'm in traffic going 65. Yes, this is a major problem, especially with upfront earnings and upfront trip info because you have so much more information now and they're only giving you six seconds. That's not long enough, especially when you're driving. Whether you're going 20 miles an hour, whether you're coming to a stop at a stop sign or a stoplight or going down the highway at 65 plus miles an hour, that's a big problem. So you need more time. It should be 10 to 12 seconds like it used to be. Gives you that information to look at, but also in a safe manner. So if you're driving, if you're coming to a stop, or if somebody in front of you is coming to a quick stop, you're going to be safe on the road. Not fear of missing out because it's only six seconds and you can't make an informed decision whether that ride's worth it or not. Going on, number six, allowing fake passenger names. Number seven, low reimbursements for long trips, which is basically deadhead. Heading. Number eight, not increasing fares for passengers with low ratings. Then going on, passengers that tell me I don't know where I'm going or that the GPS is broken. Yes, backseat passengers are a pain. And especially when it comes to them trying to tell you where to go and you could just follow the map. Now, one of the things that I do notice every once in a while, depending on how the passenger is, they'll say, hey, look, I know the map tells you to go one way, but it's actually a one way or there's something that's wrong with that particular map. Then at that point, yeah, that's perfectly fine. I don't mind that. But it's right when somebody gets in the car and they start trying to instruct you on where to go. You know, we're drivers, we drive the area, we know the area, we probably know it better than you as a passenger. Just saying. Number t Going back to the list, number 10, not increasing reimbursements for drivers with high ratings. Number 11, not allowing passengers to select their driver. Uh, number 12, allowing passengers unlimited time at stops, forcing to cancel and look like a jerk. Yes, stops are only supposed to be three to five minutes. We've talked about this plenty of times. Don't let people leave anchors in your car, like jackets, cell phones, kids. Uh, there's a whole host of things that people can try to leave in the car to keep you there, especially if they're going into department stores, malls, grocery stores. If they're going to the corner store to a house or something, you can tell them, look, five minutes is the cutoff time. Anything beyond that, I have to cancel and move on. We're not getting paid to sit in the car. Number 13, allowing passengers to add stops while the trip is going. Number 14, false surges. And we've talked about this on Show Me The Money Club where is Uber surge baiting its drivers? You might open up the app and see lots of surge in the area. Then you go online and all of a sudden it magically disappears except for a couple of hot spots, and that's really about it. Or also, you could be driving literally in the surge zone under the dollar amount that it shows. It could say $10 on the surge map, and really it says next trip, $5.50. Hmm, something's going on there. But either way, uh, that is a real problem and a lot of drivers are sick of it. Uh, going on, number 15, impossible quests. Uh, number 16, deactivating drivers based on lies. Absolutely a huge problem that's been around since the beginning. They take the passenger's word for it because maybe the passengers just got it out for the driver. Maybe the passenger just wants a free ride and so they make a lie up not realizing that it can deactivate a driver and really screw with their livelihoods. 
and there's no real appeal process currently except for certain areas that have it set up like in Washington state uh, there's a, there is an appeals process but the problem is beyond that there is no appeals process when it comes to it you could try to email them and they're like nope our decision's final and based on what so these types of things sometimes should have proof built in and there's no proof saying oh my passenger oh, it was appearing to be drunk uh what about the the 10 other rides that the driver had given before that you think they were drinking on no they weren't so these are things that they need to really address and really hone in on when it comes down to it because it can really mess with drivers abilities to make an income especially if you're a full-time driver out there and number 17 passengers that promise to tip in the app if you've driven even one day and somebody says oh yeah i got the tip in the app and then you go and you wait and then you wait and you wait and weeks go by and there's no tip that comes in the app yeah passengers say this all of the time oh i'll tip you in the app and it never happens so that is a list of the 17 things that this driver has a gripe with when it comes to driving for uber now let's talk about some of the things that you had to say in the comments and before we get into those comments what comments do you have do you want to add to the list do you have something to say about part of the list comment below and let us know maybe we'll make a part two or part three depending on people's complaints so make sure you comment in the comments so we're going to start with our youtube community tab first and this is where we posted it was in the community tab so if you're not subscribed already to the channel make sure you do because we do post things in the community tab like this and we like to see what people's comments are first comment mark hernandez says I will also add backseat drivers telling me where to turn and when I have the GPS in front of me. Yes, we've talked about that in there uh, already. That was in the current list. Uh, not putting on seat belts, eating and drinking inside the car, being late for a pickup. I always get requests that are 10 minutes and when I arrive, they're still not ready. Mark also put riders slamming my doors. They're going on Rogue the Ronin, said number 16 should be my number one, deactivating drivers based on a lie. The reason that's my number one, for the simple fact I got deactivated for that, and I've been in the appeal process for the last 10 months trying to get back on Uber. There are, our appeals process is despicable, deplorable, and absolutely shows they don't care about the drivers. They're going on, Naisha says, let's add a few, no pictures of the passengers beforehand, not knowing the drop off address beforehand, which has changed because of upfront earnings. But if you're in a market that does not have upfront earnings, well, you won't be able to see that yet. Uber is supposed to be rolling this out to most markets, if not all markets by the end of the year. So you should have that upfront trip info, knowing where the pickup and drop off will be. And then she also goes goes on and says allowing people to order uber for other people going on then good days says 18 uber not charging extra for four passengers which i'm not sure what that's all about because it's one to four passengers to begin with uh so uber x is going to be the same price no matter what uh not sure where you're going with that one particularly uh number 19 people with so bad ratings who use the app number 20 you drive 10 minutes to get a rider and he's only going one mile away or driving to a pickup location that's even longer than that 20 minutes 25 minutes 30 minutes away and they're only going a mile or two down down the street yeah that's a real problem and again with upfront earnings that does address it so you don't have to accept that ride if you don't want to number 21 driving to pick up riders and they cancel where you don't get paid then number 22 uber always believes the wasted passengers they believe the passengers over the driver all day so this is why you should have a dash camera this is why you should have documentation of everything so if there's a problem right on the ride once it's finished or once you have to cancel if you're a driver and you have to cancel on the rider then document it right away take care of it because then that's going to be your proof right off the bat then he goes on and the last one says uber takes 50 percent of the money and the list goes on and on now another comment says not enforcing car seats for people who have kids who need to be in them yes that is a huge problem parents this is the safety of your children why would you allow them to get into a car without the proper car seat it's against the law it's not safe for your child anything could happen on the road you don't know just yesterday i was driving two major accidents while i was driving 
And, you know, that's a big thing. You don't know if something could happen. Somebody might not be paying attention, being on the phone, whatever it might be, and crash. All of a sudden, now there's a big problem. So don't take that risk. Make sure you have car seats for your children. If you can't carry it for some reason, well, maybe you might have to find something else for your kids. All right, now let's go over to our Facebook page, talk about some of the comments you left there. All right, and right off the bat, Nicole says, not being transparent with how pay is calculated with upfront pricing. Yeah, they say time and distance and several other factors now make up, but what are those factors and how are you deciding what the pay rate's going to be? There's zero transparency when it comes there. The only thing you see is what you're going to get right up front when you accept it. But how do they actually come up with that number? That is non-existent. And they claim that there's more transparency behind it, but there really isn't. So something needs to, to give there. Then going on, uh, too difficult to get a live person when calling support and holding it against us when we decline trips that would actually cost us money to accept. Yeah, here's the big thing. Remember, acceptance rate does not matter when it comes to upfront earnings. And if they send you an email, just ignore it because we're here to make money as drivers. We're not here to operate a charity. So if they want to send you 20 minutes away for a two mile trip or a minimum fare trip, don't take it. It's not worth it. And they need to realize that pricing these types of trips out like that is not going to be worth it for the driver. And so with that being said, Cancel the ride, don't accept it. And another comment that people say from Tim is having to randomly take 100 pictures of yourself at any given moment. Another comment says for Jim, no gate code given. So if you live in a gated community or apartment complex and you need a code in order to get into the parking lot or to pick somebody up, uh, there should be some sort of way to communicate a code or even have a code designed for drivers who are coming in to pick people up or drop food off. And then the last comment says, non-accessible surge bubbles that are in the woods or out on the tarmac or even in the middle of the water. We've all seen these surge bubbles that pop up and you can't get to them. There's no way. So that could be a real issue too. Those are a list of different things that people say suck driving with Uber. Now again, make sure you put your comments below on what you think or if you agree with the list or if you don't have problems with certain things, what do you think? Make sure you comment below. Also, make sure you smash the like button if you enjoyed this content. Make sure you subscribe. And also, if you wanna see some annoying things that passengers do, check out this video right here. And again, if you haven't hit that subscribe button, it's right here. Real easy to do, just go click, tap, and you'll be able to see all of our great content coming up. All right, drive safe, everyone.